Hey everyone, trying something new today. I am going to attempt to use my drawing board as a way to explore some of the more complex blockchain concepts that I've been trying to explain to folks um, in other medium. Um, so I'm gonna give it a shot. Obviously it's my first time doing this and uh, if you guys have uh, feedback, um, I'd really appreciate if you could let me know if you find it useful. My name is Luis and this is the drawing board. So this episode is going to be about the Sonic blockchain, as you can see from uh, my drawing board right here. Um, if you don't know uh, what Sonic is, if you've never heard of it before, um, it was previously called uh, Phantom. Um, the ticker symbol was FTM. Um, now, the ticker symbol is no longer that, it is just S. Um, which makes it a little bit hard to search on CoinGecko or CoinMarketCap because there actually were some previous tokens called Sonic and S is too short. Um, so it's, uh, sometimes it gets a little tricky. But yes, this is, the, this is the token you need to be looking for right now. It's, it's kind of young, um, but Phantom itself was around for over a year before it kind of transitioned to this new kind of revamped brand and this revamped tech stack. And what I want to do over you know, the course of this session is I want to show you guys why I think the Sonic ecosystem is worth uh, getting into early and uh, what makes it kind of unique. So in order for us to kind of appreciate um, what makes Sonic unique, you have to kind of think about the blockchain in layers first. So I'm going to like talk about the topmost layer is the one that kind of everyone has always known about uh, crypto. That's just the, you know, the user layer. Uh, every blockchain must have a way for users to send value um, to each other. And if you're talking about kind of the classic blockchains like Bitcoin, that was kind of all that was needed. Uh, if you think about what Bitcoin does well, it literally only does two things. It can either transfer value or it can store value. And honestly, that was kind of enough. Um, however, as time has gone on, it is now 2025, 16 years after Bitcoin was launched. You can't just have that anymore because we've had, you know, literally hundreds, might even be thousands at this point, of uh, layer one contenders who are all trying to become either the next Ethereum or the next Solana or next um, BSC or, or whatever. And you got to ask yourself, okay, um, all of those other existing layer ones are already out there. They've already got their users and they've already got like apps and all of that stuff. What makes your new layer one compelling enough to, to bring over this new audience? Um, and the answer to that is the second layer of, of every blockchain, which is kind of the app layer, right? So we had users up here and we have apps um, here. Um, and these apps could be anything from, you know, tooling. I'm just going to make a tool here. Um, or it could be kind of a little bit more DeFi type stuff like, say, um, you know, uh, savings or, or borrowing or lending or stuff like that, right? So yield products. Um, it could be games, right? Which is kind of what you'll see uh, more often than not now, yeah? And then there's always going to be at least one or two, um, you know, art um, art or uh, NFT art marketplaces. Um, and these apps are kind of what you would expect, right? Um, they are basically businesses um, that attract users because they, they are offering services that are useful. And users, instead of just sending money to each other, which is, you know, that has kind of limited functionality, um, they can actually use these apps, right? Um, and maybe, you know, benefit from what these apps allow them to do. Um, and these apps kind of generate their fees as a result, which is fine. Now, the third and bottommost layer of, of any blockchain is what we call the nodes. Um, I'm just gonna go with a very basic computer science illustration for these. So th these are basically um, servers, right? So they're basically servers that are interconnected that are um, kind of executing the transactions um, that are being carried out by the apps or, or by the users. They're the ones that are keeping the network safe. They're contributing their computing power to the network. Um, and um, they're basically like both the guardians of the network and um, its main executors, right? Now, traditionally, with every um, 
traditional kind of um, a blockchain network, uh, whenever a transaction occurs, like either you send money to a user or whatever, or maybe you fulfill a transaction in one of these uh, apps below, um, that money gets paid to these guys, right? Um, these are what we call gas fees. Because there are fees for, you know, kind of transacting on any blockchain. There has to be. Um, and traditionally, it's 100%. Right, so 100% of the gas fees end up um, with hmm, 100% of the gas fees end up with um, the nodes. Now, the main insight that Sonic had uh, when it launched was that maybe this is no longer the right way to do a modern blockchain. Um, and what they have done is that instead of 100% of the gas fees going to these guys, the, the nodes, um, only 10% does, right? right? And actually what happens is that 90% is returned to the app developers. So what that means is that the apps are not only making money from their, you know, their, their default revenue stream, like maybe there's transaction fees uh, here in the NFT marketplace, right? Or maybe there's transaction fees for kind of using the borrowing and lending services of whatever this uh, protocol is. Um, they are also going to make money from the gas itself and 90% of it is kind of kicked back to them by the protocol. And what that means is that apps are basically like first class citizens in the Sonic blockchain. Um, you are going to make quite a lot of money. Um, there's quite a good economic incentive for you to bring your, your stack or your protocol or your platform over to Sonic because it pays quite well, right? And you've seen this already because some of the big names uh, like Aave or Pendle or I think recently uh, CCTP, which is kind of like the thing that runs uh, USDC or does the kind of conversion for USDC, um, have all kind of moved over, right? Uh, sorry, not moved over. They have created instances of themselves in the Sonic blockchain. They are economically incentivized to do so. Um, it's certainly both a growing ecosystem, meaning there's more users that are kind of uh, starting to get into Sonic, but also um, the gas kickback is pretty good for them, right? Even if um, the direct usage on their platform is not as high yet, um, they get enough uh, earnings from the gas fees that it actually makes it uh, pretty profitable overall. Um, so yeah, the apps get a lot of love, right, in the Sonic ecosystem. But if you think about it, you need both apps and users for this stuff to kind of work really, really well, right? Um, so what do you, the users get? Well, the, the users get some love also. Um, and the main one that I want to talk about is uh, on June, this year, 2025, and as I'm recording this, it's, it's March 24th, so this is a few months away, there will be an airdrop of a pretty substantial size. It is a 200 million S token uh, airdrop, right? Um, now, it's not going to be the entire 200 million that's going to be like just dropped on the community. It is going to be tranched up, and you can kind of, if you want to like start to look into the details, you just go to soniclabs.com. Um, it's all explained there. Um, but what I'm going to talk about very quickly is how you would be able to be eligible for this. Um, Sonic itself is already a in mainnet, so it's not like a testnet kind of uh, blockchain. You can actually go and start using apps and, and doing all sorts of things to, to kind of qualify for this 200 million. Um, one of the easiest ways, of course, is you just like stake uh, S, right? And you would do that right in the soniclabs.com website directly. Easy. Right. Um, the other thing is you could hold um, preferred assets. Um, so they have a list of what these preferred assets are, but I'll give you some examples. One is uh, SC ETH. The other is SC USD. These are kind of like the wrapped version of these tokens specifically for the Sonic ecosystem. So they they want people to kind of uh, hold it so that the the total value locked on the ecosystem goes higher, and and because of that they are willing to. Uh, incentivize people or reward people with the token airdrop later on. Um, and the the last way that you can do it, although honestly there's like tons of others, but these are just kind of three of the basic ones, just use the apps, right? There are many 
main net apps on Sonic right now that will allow you to kind of really experience what Sonic is capable of. Um, I'm going to give you uh, two examples of apps that I use um, pretty regularly. Uh, I'm a kind of an LP farmer. I like I, I like um, I like farming rewards um, and profiting from participating in liquidity pools in Dexas, right? So the main place that I do f go for that is Shadow, uh, Shadow.so, which is kind of the main Dex of the Sonic ecosystem. On Shadow.so, you can be an LP provider in, you know, kind of the all of the tokens that you would normally expect, right? So there's going to be SUSDC, there's going to be uh, SWEF, there's going to be... Um, I mean, obviously, S Shadow, which is shows Shadow is the token, the governance token of the Dex itself. Uh, I've got positions in all of these, uh, and I think, uh, if I'm not wrong, I think I'm doing somewhere between 80 to 100 uh, percent APR on them. Um, and actually, the main way I am kind of managing all of these pools are, I mean, I'm not doing it manually. I'm actually kind of doing it with. Uh, uh, beefy finance, beefy dot finance. Um, so all of these kind of pools are just kind of being managed by beefy dot finance for me. I don't really kind of go in every day or so and manage my price ranges anymore. Um, I just kind of let beefy finance do it, and and yeah, it's average some averaging somewhere between eighty to one hundred percent APR, which is um, pretty good overall. Um, I mean, I'm not complaining, of course. Um, the other place that I've got some money is uh, Beats. Dot finance. Um, so Beats is kind of a vault system. It's a vault protocol that allows you to deposit your funds, and then they and it will they'll kind of take your funds and then uh, redeploy it in a variety of different strategies. Um, uh, different people will have different strategies that they that they prefer on Beats Finance. I'm Kind of old school, so I'm just in a USDC, um, USDC.E pool, so it's just stable, right? And this one is doing something like 10% APR, which I think is pretty good also. Um, so if you're doing 10% here and 80 to 100% here, this is like completely stable, so it's great, right? So not only am I making APR from both uh, Shadow and uh, from Beats and from whatever else I'm using on the Sonic ecosystem, but all of that stuff is accruing as points um, that I that will then eventually convert into uh, S tokens uh, sometime in June. And I guess we'll find out then whether or not uh, all of this was worth it. But honestly, if you are again making somewhere between eighty to one hundred percent, so and so, um, it's probably already fine. Right? So I think the best part about this is that I'm already earning pretty directly from the stuff that I'm using on the Sonic ecosystem. And there's also kind of the potential of uh, a good amount of points um, that will eventually turn into a good amount of S tokens. So yeah, if you are uh, interested in getting started with any of this stuff, um, how do you get going? Uh, I would say uh, start here. Um, start with uh, Sonic Labs. Uh, this is the cheapest way to bridge your uh, Ethereum from uh, the ETH ecosystem over to Sonic. Uh, it takes about 20 minutes to bridge your assets using the Sonic Labs bridge, but it is the cheapest way that I could find. Um, there are much faster bridges out there, but they are also expensive. I'm cheap and I'm patient, so I use uh, Sonic Labs. Uh, I would then go uh, directly to Sonic Sorry to uh, Shadow. So because that is, you know, kind of the primary dex there. You can LP uh, manually, or you could do it uh, with BP Finance. Um, that's my third stop for you guys. Uh, and then lastly, just you know, if you're into try trying these uh, kind of vault-like products, you can use uh, Beats. Finance. Also, you can play around with uh, whatever else is there. Um, it is a little bit more cutting edge than the LP farming stuff. Um, and because of that, I have less money in it just because I'm a little bit less familiar with kind of the pitfalls of this stuff. Um, most of my funds are uh, here uh, in Shadow, or I, I guess I should say managed via Beefy. This, this is kind of where I'm at. And that's it. Um, hopefully you guys found that useful. Um, and if you have any other kind of 
concepts or new protocols or ecosystems that you want me to explore and kind of tackle uh, in this way, please do let me know in the comments. I'm really happy to, to try again and maybe make something even better. I'm also learning alongside you guys with stuff like this. Please do try out Sonic if you are interested as either an app developer or as a direct user like me. Um, I think there's a lot of stuff to explore and learn. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.